People keep saying that Stevie Wonder isn't actually blind, and I wonder, like, how real that actually is. Stevie Wonder has been blind since he was born. <laughs> that's that's what I like to think. He was uh, actually he was like a preemie, actually, and while he was being um, warmed up, you know, like they have to keep them warm, he went blind because of the radiation. Wait, while he was being warmed up as a baby? Yeah, because like he was being. Uh, Incubated, that's the word, right? Oh, I thought you meant like warm up, like, ooh, and then like he just like lost his vision. As a baby, Stevie Wonder's voice makes me go blind on a regular basis, but. That's what that song Visions is about. It's about losing his sight while vocally warming up. We got yes. Mariah here to hold down the fort. What did you do today? What did you have for breakfast? I had a bowl of cereal and a cup of uh, coffee. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did cup I cheer you? Oh, well, yeah. I don't drink coffee. I actually had to wake up for a early rehearsal today Whoa. at 10 a.m. And then I was rehearsing until about 2.30 for Cereals at the Flea coming to you. Cereals! Um, in late May <laughs> on Cereals at the Flea on Instagram. At Cereals at the Flea on Instagram. Go follow. Cereals at the Flea on Instagram. There you go. <laughs> I posted a video on Instagram um, of me singing the Stevie Wonder song. Oh my God. Where can people find it, Mariah? They can find it on my IGTV, and that is on uh, at m.e underscore Cameron. I'm going to tell you about our upcoming guests. Our first guest is Caitlin Herman. She is a woman. That woman is a lady. Okay. That lady was in the 20th season of Big Brother, BB20. And she made waves, man. <laughs> now, Caitlin and I went to high school together. Caitlin and I went to middle school together. Caitlin was in a production of Anything Goes from when she was 10 years old. Her credits mm. in the well, Plainview Old Bethpage Middle School include Crazy For You. They include Joseph in the Amazing Technicolor Dream Coat. And we haven't even gotten to high school because that's when she really sparkled as Smitty in How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. Yeah. And God damn it. And she has a podcast, Quarter Life Crisis Podcast, which is available everywhere where podcasts are available. Why don't you tell us about our second guest, Mariah? Oh, yes. So our second guest, hailing from the island of Staten, Mr. Tommy Bracco is a Broadway actor, best known for his performance is in Newsies and Pretty Woman. He also had an exceptional performance in the CBS hit show Big Brother, just like Caitlyn, and secured the top five position um, uh, as a boss. So, yeah, yes. he made it to the top five, motherfuckers. That means Absolutely. something. Check him out also on TikTok and YouTube and IG. Mm. Um, yeah. uh, because this guy's constantly putting out content. It's a yeah. conversation to tune in for. Without any further ado, here is Caitlin Herman and Tommy Bracco. And I lit I will I like literally even just talking about it, the feeling comes back of how I felt when you came into the house. It was just like you were I not well. <laughs> you were not well. Not well. We have Caitlin Herman and Tommy Bracco. So Here's, here's what my understanding is. Tommy reached mm -hmm. out to Caitlin, said, hey, Caitlin, you were a massive success on this show. Yes. I feel a kinship to you. You're from yeah. New York. Stop. <laughs> that was the first time I ever did it. So, no kidding. I'm a major fan of the show. I have been for years. I never reached out to one other single person, but I reached out to Caitlin. I just there literally knew that we were meant to be friends. It, it's wild, actually. Tommy, I want to I want to ask you a little bit because I want to tell you why we started this podcast in the first place. Mariah, our producer up here, our yeah. lovely, beautiful Mariah Cameron, yeah. she uh, help is helping my friend Chris and I produce a podcast. Chris was, was on tour with Theater Works, and wow. I was about to go on tour with a musical. And um, out of nowhere, I, it was a week before Broadway got pulled. Um, they called me and they were like, uh, our venues are pulling out, so yeah. we are on hold. And I was like, Sorry. wow, my, my biggest fears have come true. It was actually very comforting, it was very cathartic, because for three months I was like, this is such a huge thing for me. And it's like, 
this came out of nowhere. Life, life just happens to you, you know, yeah. that kind of in the same way that Big Brother just kind of happens to you. And, and the reason <laughs> you're both on is because you have those New York accents that are thick as thieves. You both did Big Brother. You both did theater at an early age. And I wanted to ask you, Tommy, about kind of that road to Broadway for you. At uh, Where did you start? Uh, how did you develop your skills? Wait, before I answer this, can I ask you what show you were going to go on the road with? It is a new musical called Austin the Unstoppable. It was going to teach kids how to eat healthier. Basically, the past six months, I've been, um, I was about to hit 300 pounds. And I was, and I had been cast in the role at that point. They were like, this is a, it's about a kid who has, his dad dies from like, um, complications to diabetes and he, it's I was gonna play an 11 year old boy <laughs> and I was getting paid too much money to do something like that and um, I made the choice I was like I'm gonna go to theaters and schools and I'm gonna preach to these kids about eating healthy but like a part of me was like I have to do that for myself so that they can see that it's possible yeah. I've lost 85 pounds since November so, you know, I was always, I was always kind of a big kid and, and comfortable with that. But I was like, my, my body is like my weapon. And I, you it? know about that because you were making them sweat in the Big Brother house with those dances, Tommy. I was dying. <laughs> I was dying. I loved it. Yeah. Corner, 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 corner. Oh, I love it. Wow. That's so incredible. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, yeah. What a beautiful story, really. Oh, thank you. I, love. I hope it's going okay. Like you oh, yeah. you are this you're on this incredible life changing journey. And now fucking can I curse? Oh god. Yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't fucking care. <laughs> uh, cool. <laughs> love you, bitches. <laughs> now you're stuck inside. It's hard yeah. and it, it challenges you even more because you know, as if losing weight and getting healthy isn't hard enough. Now you, you can't go to the gym. You got you workout restrictions on top of that. Oh, yeah. Grocery stores is harder. It's there's yeah. a whole new level of challenges that come with this quarantine and being healthy. What are you doing, Caitlin, to stay sane during all this? Um, well, you know what? As a certified life coach and meditation instructor, it really does not take much for me to be able to return back to a, a very sane s space. Mm. Um, I think as human beings, we all go, I'm not perfect at all. We all kind of spiral at points. We all kind of get into the space where we, you know, can, can turn away from a loving, a loving place. But um, I will say that I think one of the best qualities I have as a human being is my ability to come back really fast. So I'm able to kind of recognize when I'm spiraling or recognize when I'm really just not close to home. And the things that I do to get back are meditation, which is, I know is not for everybody. Um, and in response to that, I kind of tell people to practice um, the idea of, of prayer, which sounds a little like a little too much for some people. Um, but praying doesn't have to be like you on your knees, like over your bed, praying to just pray. It doesn't have to be to God. It, just, it could be the universe. It could be to yourself. It could just be like you stating out loud what you want to receive from this time, like what you want to happen. Yes. Um, also like Matt, this is such an important time of space where like we're all in this together where I think manifesting um is is extremely powerful and important right now so I like encourage people to manifest and if some people are like well I don't know how to manifest I don't know how to do that listen to like the easiest thing you can do to manifest ready for this yes let's say you're someone that wants to manifest like um abundance like physical abundance not even like abundance with love let's say you, you're trying to be greedy and you're like i want that cash i want that money, the money. my favorite thing for people to do during this time especially my clients if all the time in the world go on your favorite websites i don't give a shit if it's bloomingdale's nordstrom Revo i don't care what you do fill up, that cart. fill up that cart like 
Fill it up as if you can check out, as if you have an unlimited amount of money. Just fill up everything that you want as if you can check out and put in your card because that's your way of being like, yep, this is this is what I'm worthy of. This is what I can have. These are the things. And it's a fun little daydream, daydream manifesting exercise. Like it's, it's acting as though you have that already. So there's just some like cute little things you can do to just stay yes. safe, daydream a little. But um, yeah, just... I think daily FaceTimes are also really important, checking in with those that Boy. you love, like just stupid shit like that. It's really not that hard. You will, you are exactly. what you want it to be. So I love yeah. that. All of that, Caitlin. What have you been doing, Tom? <laughs> what have I been doing? Um, I also feel like one of my skills is being able to recognize when I'm spiraling, like you put it, or just yes. not myself, not my best version of myself. And to be honest with you, I actually checked myself earlier today and I'm recognizing that hmm. I'm a little more anxious right now than I have been. And so I do have to start meditating again. Um, and I do pray also. I, I, I'm a big fan of everything that Caitlin just said. Um, yeah. Caitlin, yeah. When, when did this journey start for you? Because the last thing I, I knew is that you were going to SUNY Oneonta and you were, what were you, what did you want to major in when you left I, high I school? I wasn't an industry major. I thought I was going to be the next Ari Gold from Entourage. I wanted to be <gasps> an agent. Like, oh my God. That was my thing, Keith. It was like, I loved doing theater. I loved doing acapella, all that in school, but I was never the best. Like I wasn't like, I wasn't, and I'm so self-aware that it's like, I knew that that wasn't my path. I knew I wasn't going to be the star, but I yeah. knew that I wanted to be involved in some way or another. Absolutely. So I thought, okay, I'll be, I, we've always known, like I managed the Jones. I, I was assistant manager of on a high note. Like I had, I always knew I wanted to be some sort of love. I always knew I wanted to be some sort of like power position. I just didn't know how. So I thought being an agent would be it. So I went to SUNY Oneonta. I got my degree. As soon as I got, I, I got out of school, I got a really great job at a music management company in the city. And it was about four months into that where I kind of had a spiritual awakening where I started to realize um, kind of how how tainted the industry was in the in the in the part of the industry that I was in, yeah. and how it really just not was it was not aligned with who I was becoming post college. So um, I kind of fell into a situation where um, I felt like I was coaching our artists, a lot of our artists, they're very, they were very old school. It was like the OJs, the Commodores, Christopher Cross, like old school guys that were like, we don't want to do these meet and greets anymore. And mm. I felt like I was asking them these empowering questions of like, well, why did, why did we do music in the first place? Like, I just felt like I was really like stepping into this thing where I was like, I don't know what this is, but I should probably focus on this. And I ended up seeing the psychic medium who um, I really went to her because I was so intrigued with mediumship and I wanted to connect with with my uh, grandfather that had passed many years earlier. But at the end of the conversation, she was just saying to me, I thought, I thought she was crock full of shit. She was like, it's an honor to meet you. Like you're going to be one of the most influential life coaches, spiritual um, influencers of your time. And I was like, this woman is bat shit. Like I have no idea. <laughs> like, wow. I was so uninterested in any of that shit. I was like, okay, see you crazy. Like, Whatever, but on the way out, she was like, I recommend your guides keep telling you, keep telling you to tell you to read this book called Spirit Junkie by Gabby Bernstein. And I don't fucking, last time I read a book was like, because of Win dixie in third grade. I was like, all right, like, okay. So um, one day at work, I worked in Union Square. I There's a Barnes and Noble in, in Union Square. And I, just, and I just felt drawn to go during my lunch break. The book was right in front of me. I felt a pull. I grabbed wow. it. I read it in one day and my life changed. So um, that's that's long story short of how that happened for me when that went back to school. But I've kind of, it was, it was a, a reawakening. I feel like we all have it when we're born and then our lives kind of go in different places and are influenced by different things. Keith, you know, we didn't um, go to the most... Um, Oh, What's God. the word? Our high school wasn't What's very <laughs> diverse at all. Like there just right. wasn't a lot of positive influences. Although I felt theater yeah. was that for me. I was also like in the cool group and like right. there, it wasn't very, um, there wasn't space for me to become the spiritual person yeah. that I am today. There was so, not much space to evolve in the space that was being created for us. There were ways like, Granted, I, I, I harbored like resentment a lot throughout 
our high school experience because I was learning a lot like with choir with what we had it was it was a very specific way of of being taught how to sing and how to you know merge into a community yeah. um you know that's a whole other podcast and we <laughs> we will actually be having on i'll tell you we're having uh blair goldberg on from Kinky oh, my Girls, angel, i love her she's gonna be on our saturday episode it's our mother's mm-hmm. day episode Tommy, do you know blair no but I might know her. How do I know that name? She's Broadway. She's uh, yeah. Broadway our- moms also, maybe. Um, if you've ever seen any of their 54 Below things, she does. What has she been in? Uh, Kinky Boots, uh, knows- the Kinky Boots National Tour. Uh, she was in Carrie also. She was in that, that Carrie. Uh, she's, she's wonderful, though. Now that, now that we're bringing Tommy into the conversation. Uh-huh. Oh, um, <laughs> we just had Gabrielle Ruiz on. Uh, last oh, Gabby. time. Yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely and she was talking to us about a chorus line because believe it or not, I did a chorus line when I was 13 oh, years old. I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I was, I three, I was yes. Al, and they heard this on the last podcast, but I was Al, I was Richie for four uncomfortable performances, <laughs> and I was Bobby. And um, that show formed what it meant to sacrifice your time as an artist for the things that you care about. Oh my God, that yeah. was incredible. Caitlin, I have to send you a clip from this, like from rehearsals for that show, because yeah. there's something about a chorus line, you guys, I'm sure you all know, like that <sighs> choreography, like, <laughs> When it goes, ah, oh, I'm gonna do it. Literally. Oh my god, please! Exclusive! Oh. Not yes. uh. oh my god, it was literally like it's hill. It was, yes. It was, ah, uh, I don't know. I, I get asked all the time, like, what's your favorite show you ever did? And I truly, I don't know if I can choose, but if you had a gun to my head, you had to choose. <laughs> it would be a chorus like that. Wait, can we just stop for a second? Imagine a world in which there's just a bunch of gay men who have a gun to Tommy's head. And they say, like, you're about to pass. Like, you will pull the trigger. About to pass. Your favorite musical. Your favorite musical theater show you've done. Right now. (laughs) Don't test me, Tommy. Period. (laughs) Um, <laughs> honestly i can't think of another show besides a chorus line that you would live in that situation yeah literally. michael bennett's literally. choreography those stories I mean, y'all know ryan murphy is adapting a mini series for a chorus line part of yeah. that netflix deal tommy mm-hmm. get that audition baby that's you i mean that's you you're get netflix on the phone <laughs> ted sarandos I'm netflix is caitlin <laughs> Oh, Caitlin, talk to us about your podcast yes, that you're on. This is so fun. Um, it's called QLC, which stands for Quarter Life Crisis. Um, now that I'm quarter life adjacent, because I just turned 26, it's work. I'm such a fraud. But uh, we started it. Actually, my friend Morgan and I, who was also on Big Brother, but it was a season called Big Brother Over the Top. It was only on CBS All Access. Um, her and I, one day we were pre-gaming to go to the bungalow, which is a bar out in Santa Monica. We were going to do a day drink and her and I just looked at each other and we were fucking wasted. And we started coming up with an idea of like quarter life crisis, getting groups of, of girls together that, uh, you know, move to LA that aren't from here. Because a lot of us, a lot of the friends I've made in LA are not from LA. So we started Mm -hmm. to think of like, like programs we could do where we bring a bunch of girls together, like wine nights, sip and see, all of that stuff. But then we realized, okay, maybe that's a little too aggressive as like a first step. Like maybe let's make a podcast first and then we can turn it into that. Um, So we started this podcast. It's health, wellness, figuring your shit out. I'm the certified life coach. Morgan does the fitness stuff and our friend Amanda is a registered dietitian. And we bring on reality people. We bring on health experts. We talk about random shit. It's just super relatable. We have a really fun time doing it. And um, yeah, we, we love it so much. So, so much. That's I, And I love that you're still <laughs> finding new ways to like create work. Like even, even from becoming... It, almost the next Ari Gold to becoming mm-hmm. the next life coach to mm-hmm. maybe becoming yeah. the next Me, like Caitlin, like <laughs> guys we fucked podcast superstar queen. Yeah, yeah just a bunch of 
words in a row. They're not sentences per se. But, but exactly. I was gonna say the are going to be like what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, we, we, we. I think Tommy can attest to this too. I think it's really um, when you get off a show, it's it's kind of your time to figure out like. Not, not without pressure, but it's just like you have these opportunities and you have this platform and the opportunities of what you want to do are kind of endless. It's like, yeah, I can start a podcast and sure, maybe it won't monetize within the first few months. But like the fact that I already know that no matter what happens, I'm going to have minimum a thousand people listening minimum. It's like, that's really special. And, and we have this weird opportunity to, to impact more people than really we could have ever thought so the creativity is is very exciting and i mean tommy like and his tiktoks and his family it's like a lot of that's really fun and really creative but like he also isn't like blind to the fact that a lot of people are seeing this and he's impacting a lot of people like just making them smile it's really special the whole thing is just really special i i love that tommy also has that like dynamic he's he's managed to break a mold in some way because like a lot of theater people i know there is a stigma about reality tv it's about undoing those stigma and and uh you know you can do it by reclaiming it you can do it by redefining it you can recreate and and just like rebrand the idea even if it's just for yourself like because a lot of people will hold that over your head or what have you. And yeah. Those are the that, things that- That's what I love about Tommy, because you did do it for yourself. Yes. You liked Big Brother, so you auditioned for Big Brother. Exactly. Nothing else really matters. It doesn't <laughs> matter if you're, you know, your Anne Bogart and your viewpoints don't match up with reality TV or Shakespeare doesn't. Fuck those people, Thomas Seriously. Bracco. You are, you are a, you're a scholar in your own right molding the way between reality tv and theater nobody's done it before it's you oh, world stage. let's um, do talk it talk about auditioning for big brother versus auditioning for theater so it's i've i like everything you just said is just like hitting a nerve or, like it's like really oh. resonating with me like i i love <laughs> it like you just said because i so i had auditioned for big brother audition, try out, whatever you want to say, uh, years before I got on the show. I think it was like, I think three times I tried out and didn't get on the show. I had gotten callbacks. I was actually up for Big Brother Over the Top that Caitlin was just talking about, Morgan was, uh, that was on. I was in finals for that, so I was flown out to LA for that show. Didn't happen. I tried out two other times in the city, the open call I went to and just didn't hear anything after the open call. And then I had this friend who was casting for them uh, and he's just a friend from Staten Island. And he said to me, I'll be honest with you, they don't like actors. They don't want actors because they want mm -hmm. real people. And I said, I am a real person. I am an actor who is a real person and I just freaking love this show. Tommy, so this you're more of a real person than most of the people I know in theater. And that transcends on reality TV. That's what's so ironic ab about that. Like, I, you made me feel so validated as somebody who naturally has an obnoxious Long Island <laughs> accent. Like, it doesn't, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about, it's why I started my own podcast, because, like, a lot of people seem to think I'm this, I'm, I'm one thing, I'm a, I'm a character guy who yeah. people, would play an, an think, idiot. Yeah. And like, people have to think, you know, one thing about you all the time. Like, that's, that's yeah. just going to be people. And I love that, like, you know, I guess the theme right now is just, like, just altering that. Like, even again, even if it's just for yourself. So I finally got on the show and mm. the dream come true. It's funny because there are so, do you know how many people in our industry, casting directors, agents, all love Big Brother? It's actually wild. I, I got out of the show, the amount of people that I heard from that are in our industry that literally said to me like, dude, I watched you all summer. I freaking love Big Brother. It's everyone's guilty pleasure. No one admits it. And then like you get on, they're like, I've been watching for nine years. And I'm like, <laughs> it was so wild. Like I actually do feel like it was good for my career in a sense, just because it's exposure. But it wasn't even about my career doing Big Brother. It was more just because I freaking love the show. I just loved the show. 
and I'm so happy that I did it and everything. Um, but yeah, it was just wild to find out how many people in our industry really do love and respect this game. It's something about it being the social experiment that it is. And that's what we do. we're people watchers. We study people, we play characters. So if you study these different types of people from all over the country, when like how they react and stuff, it's fascinating for people in our industry. It's, it's something that really just sparks our, our interest. So that was really cool to see when I got off the show to connect with a bunch of people in our industry and see how they reacted to it. Yeah, it's yeah, fascinating. It was, it was a dream come true, it really was. It was everything that I could have wanted it to be and more. Yes. Tom, yeah. you know what's interesting that I'm thinking about right now? It's like, I almost wish in a way, although everything happens absolutely the way it should, like you had been watching for so many years. You uh, you went through the audition process of quite a few times. Like it's probably, I'm sure it's very different to watch the show after having auditioned for it and not got on because then it's like, you can think to yourself, well, how would I do this? How would I uh, behave? Maybe watch some live feeds. I had been watching the show since season 15, but I never even considered the idea that I'd actually get on the show. So when I went to the audition literally as a joke and then they never stopped calling me, <laughs> I'm, I'm pissed I didn't do like my, like, how should I act? It's like, no, I, and people, but I love, this is my favorite thing when people are like, oh my God, Caitlin's so fake. It's like, I literally could not have been more psychotically real. It's like, it's true. Oh, it's scary. I, I it's, lost it's so my, true. I literally lost my shit. You think if I was like, being fake, like if I was being fake, I'd be like the most, anyone could be likable. Anyone can shut the fuck up and be likable. I was, oh my God, my favorite is when, oh my God, she's like so fake. She's like trying to get with all the guys, all the guys in the house. I couldn't be more real. I have a boyfriend of five years. You're, you guys are watching me fall out of love with my boyfriend on live TV. How could this be more real? Like what are you talking what? about? Okay, Lawrence like Pugh can't that make that shit up. Exactly. Like, it's like we can't pretend like they, bro, like you're not much of a real person on television. It's like, holy shit, but you do. But you're looking for real people. <laughs> and that's yes. what I loved so much about Tommy. It's like people like Tommy and also in his season, there was a girl, Nicole from Long Island. It's like the people that go in the house that genuinely do not adjust who they are like they are themselves through and through that for me is like the coolest thing that anyone could like that that experience totally doesn't have an effect on who you are as a person i think if i went back that's how it would be but like that just really shows who you are as a human being the fact that like an experience like that doesn't sh doesn't shake who you are i think it's sick like it's so cool i think that that's the skill that we were talking about like being able to check yourself and i, yeah. I think that, that was part of that was like the, the skills work hand in hand together, I think. I've been talking about this a little bit, and you are part of the community. We need to talk bluntly about when Broadway is going to come back. Yeah, like, because a I lot of people are saying that it needs to happen this year. And I'm just like, girl, take a look outside. Do you have any idea there is air? Your work, your enemy is air. Stay inside. We can't yes. be gathering air right now. And yes, it is a privilege. Broadway is a privilege and people forget that. And mm -hmm. I, I want I want to know your thoughts about um about when you think uh you can see a Broadway show again. What an interesting This will be a hot take and it will follow you. So just so you know, we're <laughs> we could be making history or I'm here. I like, I'll <laughs> always want to voice my true opinion. It is what it is. Yeah. Oh, it please. It is what it is. I agree that we need to respect um, the, like the times and respect the pandemic, the circumstance that we're all in and respect the people that are freaking fighting to keep this country safe. I completely respect that. As soon as they open those doors, I will be at the first show, the first night. Because I am- no matter what the show is. <laughs> I really do. Like, yes. I, I, I heard that it's not gonna be till next year. I don't know if that's true or not, but I heard 2021 is when Broadway will come back, which makes sense to me, it does. Um, it's, you know, it's really tough. It's right, it still hurts, it I get that. 
totally it, hurts. it really does it hurt. Hurts. That's the word. Love so much. Mm-hmm. We don't know what the future is for it. Um, and it is what it is. Like that's that we're in, all in the same boat. I'm back in school and I'm focusing on that. What you I'm, doing in school, Tommy? What are you studying? <laughs> I'm studying psychology. Uh, hey, girl, get out of here. <laughs> I'm going to be one of her life coaches. Like her- <laughs> but I, I too, am very like, passionate about talking to people, connecting with people, listening to people. Um, and I, I could see myself doing that as well as performing. Yes. So I'm going back to school. I'm back in school. Um, I have been since this just i started this past semester hmm. well tommy i am so proud of you look yeah. at you artists mold artists shape especially yes. during times like this most of my theater experiences have been uh vhs tv <laughs> yeah you know it's just you know i um uh that I, I have a huge family so um going to see broadway shows was not necessarily a priority you know um, there was like so much uh more going on but uh i will never forget the times where my sisters or my parents would take me to the library to get my you know my dvd and was like my broadway fix um uh and that's how i was most exposed to theater as a kid so um there's ways to still use this technology and like and use all the technologies <laughs> to to reach people you know like and and i think also this is a great time uh i like love what you said actually about um using psychology a psychology major and then like kind of tapping into like speaking to people and hearing people and listening and getting an understanding of uh you know what they're going through where they're at uh i think as actors or maybe you can like reflect on this but as actors like who are turning who are not just acting now you're becoming creators both of you how you know how is that you know or your psychology experience impacted your creative process and like what are the kind of stories you want to start creating yes mariah with the questions kind of had to go all the way i finally got across the street <laughs> i love it up. i think they go hand in hand connecting with people being creative uh when you're on stage you're connecting with the, an audience it's about the relationship between you and an, aud- and an audience like something that pops to my mind I'm always going to give a better performance when the audience is louder. The audience gives me energy. It's true. Like if you're coming to the show and you're going to give me a quiet little clap, it's going to affect my performance. Get the fuck out of here. (laughs) Performance every night. But there's when an audience is screaming for you and you feel their energy, it's a relationship. We love to connect to people. That's what we do. That's what theater is. Um, and that's, that's why I think that there's actually so many similarities between psychology, the study of people's, uh, sociology, uh, they, they do work together. They go hand in hand. So that's another reason why it does help me to stay creative. It does help me to connect with people. Um, so I listen to this, speaking of like psychology and theater, I was in a meditation about a year ago. And it was kind of during the time where I got off of Big Brother and I realized I had a lot of reflecting to do on just who I am as a person. And the big takeaway that I had gotten, no one had to tell me, I didn't have to be told. The second I got out of that house, I began to realize that I was seeking a lot of validation in that house, specifically from men. It was like the second you took me away from my family, from my boyfriend, it was like, who's going to give me attention? I need it in order to feel like I'm full, which got me thinking okay, well, um, if you really loved yourself and if you really thought you were enough, you wouldn't need the validation from anyone because it's totally within you and you're fine. So I began to then take it a step further and, and ask myself, where do you think this started? Because my childhood was normal. Like everything was normal. Parents treated me, my family's great. And then I began to realize that I think that this happened for me from theater. And I'll tell you why, because, and this came to me in a meditation. I was taught at a very young age that you do something right and people like you on stage, they clap. They clap. And that, and that was my way of realizing you did this right, I'm giving you attention, I'm clapping for you. And from that point on, I became a little bit of an attention whore and things were not, if, unless I was getting that clap, then I was not enough. 
Oh my and God. I know, I know. This all I came from <laughs> like, trust, trust and believe I know. I'm like, I'm so good at what I do. I've been holding so, on to this for a year. <laughs> so literally, I know I'm sorry. I've, I've literally never told anyone this, but it, it was so profound for me because I was like, okay, I've, I've now gotten to the root. What an incredible feeling to get to the root. Now what can I do to, to relearn that? And mm. that's when my journey to self-love began. And now I don't fucking need anyone, which is kind of weird. But, but yeah, it just, it's a crazy thing, the psychology and the theater and, and teaching us at a young age that this means we did it right and we perform more, we perform better. And I think that the way to move forward as an actor, which I am not, but it's, it's to be very aware of that and to realize that even... Yes, just because like an audience is is louder and we give more, it doesn't take away from the fact that the performance is the performance and and we are good with or without it. I mentioned actually at the beginning of this podcast that I'm checking myself. I know that I'm more anxious. I'm not feeling 100%. Everything that you just said, Caitlin, is like literally getting emotional because I think that's exactly what it is. And it's just so fun to like, you say yes to everything. Like, that's the whole point. We want to just say yes to things. Mm-hmm. We have this podcast and we have this conversation and it's actually like really going to stick with me. Believe it. Like, like this is everything you just said. Um, so I, I've been thinking to myself, like I, I completely agree with everything you said with the validation. And I think that that's yeah. my struggles right now is that in quarantine, there is no way to get that validate validation. Yep. I'm looking for it in every single way. So I literally took a test. I took two quizzes this morning from school. Wow. I got a hundred on both of them. Why do I have to tell my best friend that my cousin, why do I have to tell them that I got a hundred on this test and I can't stop myself. And I know as I'm saying it, I'm like, guys, I got a hundred. Why, why am I doing that? Why? Because I need the, fucking claps we can talk we can talk all about this like another time i i'm telling you i've i've gotten so deep with this topic and i don't think it's it was until this moment that i realized that this applies for basically i want to say 99 percent of theater community i just thought it was a caitlin thing and now i'm realizing oh my god this is not a caitlin thing <laughs> find me an actor can- who doesn't need valid Validation, man. Right. That is Please. that is literally how. If it, with a, it can be a laugh, it can be applause, it could be cr- making people cry. It's it's just about making somebody feel something. We need that empathy. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm, I'm obsessed with this. <laughs> this is such an important conversation, and it's, yes, it's something I think about a lot. It's yeah, and it's like, but now it's like someone that's listening that recognizes that within themselves, and they're like, "Wait, that is something I do." The way to get out of it is to start practicing self love, and there's a million different ways, and we can talk about that on a totally different podcast. But like, there's a million different ways to get into self love where you begin to realize that even if you don't get that clap, or even if you get that 100 on the test, and like, you're so obsessed with yourself that like there is no need to get the validation from anyone it doesn't matter you're just like sick like i'm so good within yes that it doesn't That's beautiful i i think that goes along with um i'm gonna want to say our weekly meditation for all of you board stars out there um <laughs> your weekly meditation is you know finding uh ways to validate yourself. I think a lot of, um, you know, you kind of spoke to inner child work. Um, and I think like speaking to your inner child, speaking to yourself as if you're speaking to yourself at seven years old, like you wouldn't yell at a child. You wouldn't chastise a child for wanting attention or wanting you know, a question answered. So like, it's nothing to be hard on yourself about, but like, how do you validate that inner child? I don't think it's necessary to let it go fully because it, it is a bit of a driver, but there's still like an element of it that you should let go, which is the, you know, the need for, for it. Absolutely. Yeah, something to meditate on this week. It's really, beautiful. It makes me realize just how important it is. Like, I, I wish there were mindfulness classes in like, ele- starting in elementary school. Like, mm. 
Yeah. It's just so fucking important. Yeah. Kids what need to that? know that they can make something of themselves without other people. That is the you most know? important lesson you can learn. I am, I've been, I mean, the reason I did this is because I was tired of asking people for permission. Oh, can I use your space? Oh, uh, please let me, it'll just be an hour. No, I'm going to make my this. own space this, yeah. with my own conversations and yeah. elevate other people, elevate their conversations. I'd like to thank my guests, Caitlin <laughs> motherfucking Herman Period. of Big Brother 20 fame. You can check out her podcast, Quarter Life Crisis Podcast. Everywhere podcasts are available. And I'd like to thank Tommy Bracco, who is just a beloved creature that came from New York and What's your bred of New York. He is a beautiful child and he made he taught me a lot today and you know what so did caitlin looks like i have to go back eight years in my life to learn something today and i'd like to thank you both for being here thanks for coming on